What's up everybody? I wanted to put this video out today because I am moving on Friday to a new home, a new place, and um, you probably won't see me for at least a week or two maybe till I get all my stuff set up and settled and I got a lot of work to do. I, um, I'm in the middle of uh, editing the final um, content for my film got all the music finished got everything so mixing all together now so anyway I'm gonna be kind of busy for the next couple of weeks as I move my whole life last eight years of my life and also finish this film so here's what I wanted to talk about first of all moving um, I live in New York City um, I've lived out of the city a couple of times but basically I've been in New York City most of my life um, and every neighborhood that I've lived in, I lived on the Upper West Side on 95th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam. I lived in Brooklyn in Bed-Stuy, right on the right on the border of Bed-Stuy and Clinton Hill and Fort Greene, kind of like a triangle of all the neighborhoods. Um, I lived on the other side of Bed-Stuy, over by Halsey and Marcus Garvey. Um, I lived in Washington Heights. Um, I lived in the Bronx when I was very very young, and for the last eight years, I've lived in the Bronx. Um, and I actually live in the same neighborhood in the Bronx right now that I lived in when I was a little kid. So I just, I find it interesting because every time I've left the city in the past, I've had like real anxiety about it. I mean, it's been really hard for me to leave. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm so in love with the city, the energy, um, the diversity, the, uh, trains, the culture, you know, the opportunities for creative artists like myself. Um, and I love the challenges of the city too, you know, we all live on top of each other, it can be very stressful sometimes. Um, I just, I, I guess I feel like I'm living in the real world all the time when I'm here, which is something that I, is really important to me, that I'm around all kinds of different people. and. Um, I just can't imagine living in a different kind of place. So, um, what's interesting is that as I'm getting ready to leave this neighborhood on Friday, I have no anxiety. I am so ready to go. Um, I've lived in this apartment for the past eight years, <clears throat> and it's been the most difficult time that I've ever had in New York City. It's been really, really, it's kind of a I mean, there's a lot of nice things about this neighborhood, I guess. Um, it is it is very diverse. Um, it's, uh, but it's kind of a dead neighborhood. Like, there's nothing going on here at all. The energy here is really low. Um, it doesn't feel progressive to me at all. You know, it doesn't feel like there's any real movement. It just kind of exists in its own space, and it's just sitting here, not going anywhere, not really doing much of anything. Um, I actually tried to, you know, create some creative space here. You know, I reached out about some um, workshop opportunities that I wanted to offer, things like that. Nobody really ever wanted to do anything here. Um, I guess I got a little bit of support from the Bronx Council on the Arts a couple of years ago, um, but very little. You know, I've taught some workshops for them. I won a Brio, you know, one of the, the um, artist grants for acting. Um, but I'm just talking about this neighborhood, you know, like the Bronx Council on the Arts covers the entire Bronx, you know. I worked at Pregonis Theater a lot. I had a residency there. It's a, an amazing uh, theater space, but it's not in my neighborhood. Um, so I don't feel badly about living here and actually, um, <laughs> ironically, today I go out and uh, I go out to run this morning. And I walk right by my car, which is parked on the street, and parking, this is the hardest neighborhood to park in that I've ever lived in in my life. It's like impossible. You, you will drive around for three hours looking for a parking space around here. It's just, it's insane. 
So anyway, I walked by my car this morning and somebody had ripped the side view mirror off my car. Now, it wasn't sideswiped by another car because it was on the street side, like, you know, one side of my car was, you know, the driver's side was facing out to the street. This was where the sidewalk is. Um, and it was just pulled out. Like, I think somebody just pulled it out just, just, to, just to do it, you know, just to annoy me. And, you know, I see broken glass around here all the time. People get their windshields broken all the time. I, I've actually seen kids do some bad things around here. Um, it's just, I don't know, you know, the building I'm living in, like the block that I live on, is a collection of the most inconsiderate people in the history of the world. Like, the loud music starts here at midnight and it goes until sometimes six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, all night. I would say, I would say literally that I have not been able to sleep all seven days of a week for the entire eight years that I've lived here. Like, and, and the thing is, I've kind of gotten used to it so I can sleep through the noise. And I'm talking like Madison Square Garden loud, like ears bleeding, skull cracking loud, crazy. I've kind of gotten used to it so I can kind of sleep through it sometimes, but I don't ever really fully fall asleep. And uh, I don't want to be used to that. You know what I mean? Like I want to sleep every night. You know, I want to have sleeping patterns. I want to have a peaceful existence. You know, I want to be able to think in my apartment. I want to be able to read. I want to be able to rehearse. I want to be able to work. I want to be able to watch TV, you know, watch movies. I want to be able to eat in quiet. You know, I want to, I want to be able to, to have some peace in my home. And I haven't had that here, you know. And also, it's really dirty in this building. You know, it hasn't been taken care of very well. Um, a lot of broken things in my apartment that I have not been able to get fixed over the years. Like, you know, usually the people that come up here to fix things, who I love, all these guys that work here, they're really nice people, but they have no idea what they're doing. And so it got to the point where I wouldn't allow anybody to come in here anymore and fix anything. So I've been living with broken, you know, I got brown water coming out of my tub, you know. Um, I, you know, I could go on and on about that. I mean, I'm incredibly grateful to even have a space. You know, it's a big space. It's a beautiful pre-war apartment, which is something that a lot of New York people love, you know. But um, the building's over 100 years old, so there's a lot of issues with it, you know. Um, so it's been very challenging. You know, not to mention about, pff, now it's like three years ago or something, maybe longer. I can't even remember now, but... I fell down the steps in my um, in the stairwell here. I live at the top of a five-story walk-up, and I was running down the steps, you know, like I always do. And they had just been cleaned, and they were still wet. And I went, I slipped, and I went flying, and I fell down two flights of stairs. Like I, I flew up, and I actually flew over the sign that said "Be careful, wet stairs." <laughs> you know, they were still wet up by me as well. Flew over the sign, hit, bounced, did a complete flip and then bounced and hit the, hit the marble floor on the ground in the lobby. And uh, a woman was down there, she screamed because it must have looked really bad. The two people who were working, you know, they, they stopped everything. You know, everybody just was like, something horrible just happened. And, um, you know, as I was falling and did a complete flip, like seriously, I flipped over. My legs went over, did a complete 360. I just thought, I'm about to die, you know? But I landed on my back. Luckily, I didn't land on my head. And I fractured my hip. Um, a couple of weeks after that, I got shingles, um, which happens often to people who have the shingles virus in their body. Like if you had chicken pox, you can get shingles as a grown person. And um, very often it comes from trauma or stress. Like a lot of people who have been in car accidents sometimes get shingles. Um, people who've you know gone through some kind of physical injury or even emotional stress can bring out shingles. So anyway, I had all the stress and so I had this fractured hip and shingles at the same time. I was locked in this apartment for months. You know, I couldn't get out to get food. I couldn't do anything. Fortunately, I had a couple of friends who saved my life basically. You know, they came here, they got my laundry, they brought me food once a week, you know, so I was okay. So I say all that to say I'm not unhappy leaving, you know. I mean, I could tell you all the beautiful things about this neighborhood, you know, running in the Bronx Botanical Gardens, you know, Marshall Parkway, Van Cortlandt Park, you know, um, 
I have a favorite little Indian Pakistani restaurant down the block that I, I love their food. You know, I'm going to miss my friend Vaughn who runs Green Garden Health Food Store over on Gun Hill Road, you know, White Plains Road by Gun Hill, where I get my wheatgrass juice every day. But um, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't feel really connected to this neighborhood. I, I have felt very isolated here. Um, I haven't connected with anybody in this building or really any of my neighbors. Um, you know, I know a couple of people who I see running every morning, but I haven't really connected here because, because there's nothing going on, you know? And I'm telling you, every other neighborhood that I've lived in, I've been like the mayor of that neighborhood. Like, you know, it's been very vibrant. It's been, you know, vital. It's been, you know, a neighborhood with movement, you know? Um, 95th Street was like that. Brooklyn. I mean, I was in love with these neighborhoods, you know, like I, I, I wept like a baby every time I left one of those neighborhoods. So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to uh, I'm moving upstate um, quite a ways away, not so local, but I'm really looking forward to it. There's a vibrant, um, I said vibrant again, but there's a vibrant artist community up there. A very dear friend of mine lives up there. Um, and I'm really looking forward to starting this next part of my life. So it's been very stressful packing up eight years of, you know, this last part, you know, the, the, what I've been doing here for the past eight years. And um, moving is stressful in general. So, and moving by yourself and packing by yourself personally, I feel is like it's one of the saddest things, you know, like, I think it's, I kind of like moving in a way because it's very uh, reflective, you know, you can have a lot of time to think and you're looking at things that you, you know, that are buried away in a closet or something, maybe in a drawer that you wouldn't have looked at if you didn't move. So that's kind of cool in a way, but it's also kind of sad and, um, you know, as I get older too, um, I just become a little bit more, I don't know reflective, I'll use that word again. I'm not being a good uh, writer right now, creator, but... Um, so anyway, I don't have any anxiety. I'm really excited to get out of here and get up there. And So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. So you probably won't see me for at least a couple of weeks, which you know, I don't know if anybody really cares all that much because I think I have like 160 followers at this point. So that's a whole other story, but for those who do, you know, who are interested and um, I am trying to create something a little bit different on this channel now than from what I've been doing for the last few years. So yeah, you won't see me for a few weeks. Um, so a couple of technical things I wanted to talk about. Um, I've been using a Purple Panda lavalier mic for the last year and a half since I, that's what I use to shoot my film. And um, it worked fine, you know, it was okay. I mean, I, I wasn't blown away by the quality. It was actually kind of um, not as bright as I would like for it to be. You know, it, I didn't feel that, that it was, um, I mean, you know, it's a $45, $50 lavalier mic, so w what do I expect? But um, I just, uh, I got a lot of good use out of it, made a whole movie, made all these YouTube videos with it. Um, and the other day I plugged it in and it just died like it was dead. Um, I tried it in four different audio devices um, I plugged other things into those audio devices and everything else worked. The Purple Panda is dead and um, So what I wanted to share was um, something that I found really interesting um, I saw a video once where you can actually take a pair of <coughs> Excuse me. You could take a, pa a pair of earbuds and you know, if they have a microphone on them, cut off the side that doesn't have the microphone and just use the side with the microphone, you know, and cut off the top above the microphone so you just have the mic as the top piece and it works as a lavalier mic. You know, just plug it into the same jack as uh, you would a Purple Panda or something like that or one of these Boya mics, you know, that a lot of people use. And uh, I'm using it right now. And I gotta be honest, when I tested it, I mean, I have to go back and watch this video to see, but it sounded to me equal, if not better, than the Purple Panda's been. So I found that kind of interesting. I literally bought this headphone, these headphone buds for $7 in the 99, 99, 99 cent store over on Bainbridge, around the corner from here. So 
that's kind of interesting. Um, I got to say though, Purple Panda is a great company. I reached out to them and I told them, I said, yo, I'm just out of warranty, but one year ain't good. You know what I mean? Like, come on. And they're replacing it for me. So I really appreciate that. And, you know, maybe I had a bad pair. I don't know, you know, a bad mic, but um, good company. And um, and it's good, you know, it's a good, good piece of gear. I mean, I'm, I come from the music business, you know, so I'm used to like high-end microphones, Sony C12s, you know, AKG 414, stuff like that. Um, so my audio ears are kind of tweaked for um, a higher-end kind of piece of equipment than a $45 lavalier mic. But, you know, it did, it did a really good job and the film sounds good. So, um, yeah, that happened. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm putting a lot of stuff in this one video, and that's because I'm probably not going to be here for a couple of weeks. Um, I wanted to talk about the Sony 18-105 to zoom lens, the F4 zoom lens. Um, you know, I really struggled with whether or not I wanted to get that lens or not. You know, I was going to wait for the Tamron 17-70 to because it's F2.8, which means that it's um, more versatile. Um, you could be a little bit more creative with it. You get a better depth of field. It'll work better in low light. But the 1805 is a great lens and everybody gave it great reviews, like off the charts good. Everybody loved that lens so much. And you know, the only zoom lens I had was the kit lens. So, which is what I'm using right now, actually. So, I put that 18 to 105 on my camera, which is a Sony a6400. You know, it's a crop lens camera. And, um, I kept it on there for two months and I use mostly primes you know like I bought all these primes on eBay I got them really cheap but I got great lenses you know I got Samyang 12 millimeter f2 I got the Sony 35 millimeter uh, f1.8 I got the Sony 50 millimeter f1.8 I have the Viltrox 23 millimeter f1.4 and then I went and I got the 18 to 105 because I didn't have a zoom lens other than the kit lens and everybody's like, ah, oh, the kit lens sucks and all this kind of stuff, which <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess because it has, uh, it doesn't, you know, have a steady aperture. It changes, you know, with, um, as you zoom in or out. But um, I don't know. I decided to get it, you know, um, because I said, you know, I should have one z good zoom lens in my arsenal. Oh, and I also bought the Sony 55 to 210. And believe it or not, I got it for $100 brand new on Poshmark. Now, I didn't even know what Poshmark was or Poshmart, something like that. You see, I don't even know what it is really. But um, although a friend of mine uses it extensively and makes a lot of money selling it clothes. But anyway, I, I just did a general search for the 55 to 210 because I saw a video on YouTube by this woman, Marzia Zaru, who I'm a huge fan of her work. Like, <clears throat> I wanna work with her one day. Like, she's a brilliant, brilliant filmmaker. Um, she did a video using the 55 to 210 and I was blown away by it. And so I just did a general Google search for that lens and I found one for $100 brand new on Poshmark, so I bought it and I love it, it's a great lens. So anyway, the uh, 18 to 105. I haven't been really so excited about it. You know, like it's sharp. Um, it's F4, so it doesn't work well in low light at all. You know, like it gets to like five o'clock in the afternoon, <clears throat> excuse me, five o'clock in the afternoon and it's done. You know, like you can't really use it. And unless there's like really a lot of light, the I found that the autofocus doesn't work really that well unless you have a ton of light, um, you know, proper lighting. But otherwise it works perfectly. I mean, it's a great lens. It's really, you know, it's sharp as anything, you know, and it's got great reach, you know, 18 to 105 is really good. You know, you can have wide shots or you can zoom in really far, but I don't know, just, I haven't been blown away by it and I don't really go beyond 50 millimeters much anyway, you know, and on my camera, 50 millimeters is 75 millimeters because it's a crop sensor camera. So I think I'm going to sell the 18 to 105 because um, personally, first of all, the only thing that I have that's 16 millimeter right now is this kit lens. And technically, the kit lens is more versatile or maybe better than the 18 to 105 at 16 millimeters because it's at f3.5. And you know, the um, minimum on the 18 to 105 is f4. 
So at 16 millimeters, this lens can do more. So I don't know, you know, I mean, I can't really see it, but six, you know, actually 16 millimeters feels a lot wider or looks a lot wider to me on my camera than 18. And maybe that's because the 16 shows up as 24 on my camera and the 18 is 27. So I don't know, there seems to be a big difference to me. Um, so anyway, I think I'm going to sell the 18 to 105 because I can probably get the most money for that lens of everything that I have. Um, I know I'll be able to get more for it than I bought it for because I got it really cheap and it was practically brand new. So um, I don't even want to tell you what I paid for it, but trust me, I probably paid half of what anybody else paid for theirs. Um, so I think I'm going to sell it. And, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe of selling the 18-105 to and the kit lens and getting the Sigma 16mm f1.4 because then I'll have a lot more flexibility at 16 millimeters and be able to be a lot more creative about it and more thoughtful and purposeful with using that focal length. But, um, and, and you know, then I'll still have a zoom lens. I'll have the 55 to 210. So, I don't know, you know, most of my work winds up, you know, I, I find like I'm working on a documentary right now and I find that i um, looking to use my Viltrox 23 and the Sony 50 millimeter 90 percent of the time you know because that's like a proper 35 millimeter and 75 or 80 for what most people would call it but it's 75 millimeters those two focal lengths cover pretty much everything that I want to do um, I'm getting ready to work on another film coming up pretty soon and I'll probably use those two focal lengths you know I mean I love the Samyang 12 millimeter a lot you know, I find that lens to be really special, and it's ultra-wide, like crazy wide. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to sell the 18-105 to because, you know, also the kit lens is so much lighter, and it works on my gimbal. I have a Crane M2 gimbal. Um, I can't put the 18-105 to on that gimbal. So, you know, if I want to do gimbal work with that lens, I have to go buy something else, you know, another gimbal. Um, and, you know, honestly, I think the only advantage for me would be that if I started to shoot like weddings or something like that and I am so not at that level where I could take on the responsibility of shooting something that people want to keep for the rest of their lives on the on the run like that like you know I feel more and more confident in my filmmaking shooting a movie or a documentary where I can plan out every shot really think about what focal length I want to use and you know who cares if it takes me 30 seconds to switch a lens that's no big deal but um, if I'm shooting events and things like that you know then I think I'd be more apt to want to keep the 18 to 105 or maybe get the uh, Tamron 17 to 70 since it's got more flexibility because it's f 2.8 but for what I'm doing now I don't really think I need it so yeah I think I'm gonna sell it I mean it's a great lens you know um, I re recommend it, you know, if you want something that's from 18 to 105. But for my purposes, having all these primes and for the way that I find myself working, um, I, I'm least inspired by that lens. You know, like I, the way the, f the 50 millimeter 1.8 looks when I look through my camera and the shots that I can get and the 35 1.8. Like everything else is very inspiring to me and I think it's because of the depth of field that I can get and also the flexibility in low light because I tend to shoot a lot in low light. Um, I don't know, the 18-105 to doesn't inspire me any more than the kit lens, you know, and actually the kit lens inspires me a little bit more because I can throw it on a gimbal. And so the 18-105 to is kind of like, I find myself just going out and shooting with the 18-105 to with no purpose and for no apparent reason, you know, which I guess it's good practice, you know what I mean? But it doesn't inspire me to, you know, like, why would I use it if I have lenses that can do more with all those focal lengths in between? You know, like, I don't really need it. So, I'm going to sell it. So, there's that. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but um, that's just how I feel. Um, now, you know, maybe the pixel peepers or professional cinematographers or other YouTubers will think I'm crazy or blind um, because I don't really see that much of a difference between the kit lens, the 16-50 to kit lens, 
and the 18 to 105. I mean, I know the build quality is much different. The 18 to 105 is a much better lens. It's much more solid, you know. Um, but when I shoot stuff and I throw it into DaVinci Resolve and I edit and I see what I did on the kit lens and I see what I did on the 18 to 105, I mean, I don't really see a difference, you know. Maybe slightly, but I don't know. I like what I see on the kit lens too. Um, they look the same to me. So, uh, and you know, I only shoot video too. Like I'm not a stills photographer. So I'm talking really about video here. Um, so I guess that makes a difference, you know, because we're not talking about extreme sharpness or anything like that. Um, so for video, I feel like I can make a movie professional, you know, worthy of HBO or Netflix or anything with all the primes that I have and with the kit lens included. Um, certainly with the 18 to 105, but I'm just saying I don't need it. So anyway, now I'm going around in circles. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, wish me luck over the next couple of days to get this move happening. Um, I hope you're well, you know, and I hope everybody you love is well. And if not, wow, I mean, this country, like this world, we're in a crazy time right now. I mean, from, from the environment and the climate to politics to social issues, it's crazy. So I'm looking forward to hearing and seeing and receiving more and more incredible art from all the artists that I know and um, I'm wishing everybody uh, the best and my heart goes out to anybody going through any difficult times right now and um, thanks to all the uh, YouTube creators who are teaching me so much all the time I really appreciate that your generous spirits are pretty amazing um, so shout out to all of you and that's it thanks so much peace